several things led to us bonding as a group. Um, we, we met each other for the first time in 1996 um, at a, a different conference where we all happened to be in attendance. Um, we met each other for the first time. We recognized the the synergies that we had as uh, individuals. We recognized that we shared some of the same values. And um, we thought about, well, let's create some kind of organization that um, reflected not only the roles that we currently had at the time, but more importantly, how we could create uh, an organization that bred uh, a, a broader group of individuals with those same like qualities. A, memory, a lot of memories. Uh, one memory was every time we met as a group, uh, we split the ticket. Uh, <laughs> we paid our own way uh, for a long time before we felt like we had an adequate, substantive enough agenda that we could convince our companies uh, to support our efforts. But the fact that we individually invested in the development of our vision around this is probably the most uh, meaningful memory because it's something that we created. We thought enough of it to invest our own in it and, um, and just really proud of certainly where it is today. Yeah, um, one anticipation was to um, convince enough people who were like us to belong to the organization. Um, we found that it wasn't necessarily because it was natural for us to develop this affinity group. Um, I think we were a little over, uh, we overestimated that there are some people who were like us who didn't want to belong to a group like ours. Okay, so we were a little disappointed about that, but that certainly wasn't uh, a showstopper at all. Um, and then on the other hand, what we didn't anticipate was how easy it was. I think we analyzed a little longer about how long it took for what, how substantive we needed to be to convince our companies to invest in, and it actually wasn't that big of a hurdle. Um, so that we got our leaders in our respective companies to support what we were doing, to be curious about our agenda and our intent, and to uh, actually um, support us not just in a monetary way but also in an advocacy kind of way. I guess the first company would be Amico uh, at the time, be even before it was BP Amico, and that was because of Carl Williams and his team at the Amico, and they were the the majority of the members of the original group were from Amico, and so others of us joined along the way as well. So I would say I'd give that credit to Amico. The heart stone represents our authenticity and uh, our spontaneity as well, um, and the heart represents our meaningful way of sharing. Um, and so when we started the check-in, check-out process, it was actually about us being grounded in where we were emotionally um, because we didn't get to necessarily be emotional in our respective work environments. But the, the organization allowed us to not only be professionals at what our discipline was, but to also be real human beings. And so the check-in, check-out process was a reminder that at the end of the day, regardless of our accomplishments, regardless of our uh, credentials, that we are still at, the, at our core human beings. And we were core human beings who had like uh, interests uh, because we all had this common interest of technology. And we had a common interest of paying it forward and sharing with others. And so the check-in, check-out process was just a reminder about are we present and are we there? And so then therefore we can learn together, we can grow together, we can continue to share. And the checkout was a reminder about uh, why we were together and then what we need to do uh, when we leave each other and then the reminder that we we're going to be back together again. Well, in ITSMF we weren't competitive with each other. We may have been competitive in our respective work environments, but in this setting we were family. Um, and we, the value of being together as a group was because our family would grow. And if anyone within the family got a promotion or got new recognition or got a new opportunity, that was a win for the family. It wasn't just a win for that individual. Well, I'm proud that ITSMF 22, 23 years later is still relevant. And not just relevant, but necessary. Um, I think it's, uh, 
it, it's necessary. I'm proud of the, the expanded growth of the organization. I'm proud of the expanded sponsorship and, and recognition that the organization has with its new leadership and with, with Viola. And so um, I think it's necessary because I think it is that one place where we can not worry about being competitive, where we can grow uh, intellectually, and where we can have create an affinity to people who are like us and to people who share our same uh, issues and destiny and challenges, um, but that we can also be continue to be authentic and we can be real and we, we can be professionals and we can remind ourselves that we're human beings as well. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, certainly we have big dreams. This has exceeded our dreams by far, which makes us even prouder than where we are. Um, you know, at one point we didn't think that we should grow because we thought we'd lose the intimacy. Uh, what I'm proud of today is that you are a much, much larger organization and it still feels intimate and it still feels real and impactful. And so, um, that just proved that our, our dream could be extrapolated into uh, a much broader um, perspective than what we imagined 23 years ago.